Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about a cross core 180 and a K08. These are both suspension trainers, you can get cheap ones on the market, so if you are on a budget, do look for them. Um, what I will describe is the difference between a, one, a cross core 180 is the pin. The pin comes out and allows it to be on a pulley, which allows the core to be activated much more. So that is an advancement from a TRX. On the KOA, you have static suspension, but you also have resistance bands, which can be added and then the static um, suspension taken off. But we're going to go through each of these slowly, show you some moves on them, and so you can get the best out of them. Thank you very much. Hi all, here again with our trusted Steve Darren. He's going to be demonstrating all the exercises, and I'm going to be telling him where he's going wrong. Right, so when you first get your cross core 180, you won't be able to apply it to a bar if you're doing it from home. But what they do have is on the strap, there's a buckle here. This buckle will go on the opposite side of a door frame, so you can shut the door, so when you're pulling on it, it won't come out. So it's exactly the same as it being on here, guys. So don't worry if you're gonna get one that you haven't got one of these bars. But do look if you're getting a cheaper one on the market that it does have a door buckle to allow you to use it correctly. Hi all, the first exercise we're going to go through is the chest press which will predominantly use the chest muscles and the tricep muscles. We're going to go through the proper form of how to do it and Darren's going to demonstrate for me. As you can see Darren stood in front of the cross court with loose cables. What we want to do to start with is move forward, then create a little bit of tension in the cable so we don't go falling forward. As you can see here, Darren is at a slight angle. Now, to make a cross core harder, you would come closer to the frame, which creates more of an angle for you to press from. So predominantly, you're increasing the resistance as you go back. If you find it too hard, you just slightly move your feet forward at slight wraps. It does make a massive difference, people, honestly. Also, to make it easier, you can go a wider start, so you've got more of a stable platform. Moving through the exercises, to make it harder, you can put your feet together. You could even lift one foot off which, uh, and put it on your calf or leave it hanging, because this will activate your core even more. What we don't want to do through any other exercise is pivot at the hip. We need to stay in a plank position at all times. So we're going to demonstrate a chest press. So what we want to do is start with the arms wide. When we fall through, we're just going to drop our hips through, pause. We don't want to go too deep. We want a nice powerful push from here. So we're not going to push with our hands, guys. We're going to concentrate on our core, not pivot our hips, and we're going to contract the pec and push through smoothly and in, keeping the scapulas down, no raising of the shoulders. If you can demonstrate how not to do it down, then drop for me too deep. So this here has created problems. This will cause damage to the shoulders. This will not activate your core, because as you can see, there is a big bend in the body, okay? So what we would do is we correct that, hips, posture, perfect, chest in front of delts. Let's just do three reps down to demonstrate. Also, if you can see, Darren's arms are not dropping behind him. They are more or less parallel with the line of the muscle that he's using, guys. So if we just think, when we're doing these uh, exercises, as long as the lever that we're using is in line with the muscle that we're working, we're correct. So if we're here and here, and we press from there, that's incorrect, because it's not in line with the pec. We want it in line with the pec, yeah? We got that, guys? Okay, stand up down for me. Good. Right people, now we're going to do a chest fly. We're going to go into the same position that we started with, with the chest press. So if you can get the position down. This is harder than a chest press, guys, so do not go straight in thinking that you can go all the way back, because you won't be able to. You want to get the form perfect first. 
So same trading points as earlier, but what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna start with a hammer grip, okay? And we just want the cables just outside our arms, okay? So what we're gonna do now is make sure we're posture perfect. We're gonna open up the arms. We're gonna fall through and pause. Now what Darren's gonna do is gonna hug the tree. Not press, he's gonna hug a tree. Yeah, did you see what he did there? He didn't actually press, because a lot of guys and ladies, when they, they do a, a fly, they press too much. We're not using this hinge here. We're using the, 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 the contraction of the pec to pull the arms around. The arms will bend as you drop in. You see the slight bend created? Then we're gonna hug the tree. Good, if you stand up for me, I'll rest down. So what Darren's gonna show you now as well is how you can move it a step forward. So we're gonna do a superset of a fly into a chest press, which is classed as a superset. So this will increase the intensity and allow you to start progressing a little bit more as you get stronger with a cross core or a TRX or any other suspension training equipment out on the market today. Okay, Dan, so we're going to start in the chest press position. Again, guys, pay attention to his shoulder position, his hip position, and he is starting on a chest press with a neutral grip, not a hammer grip. The hammer grip is only for the fly, guys, yeah? So, let's do that, Dan. And drop in and press. Turn into the hammer and out and drop and squeeze and in and turn and press and in and turn and out. Hammer all the way into the finish. Turn, out, press. We got the, got the idea there, guys? I sit down and finish that record. Thank you very much. We're going to chest the size of Army at the end of this six week trauma we're all going through. So now what we're going to do is going to remove this pin. This pin is another level of doing any suspension training. Um, you have to really concentrate now on your core ability. A lot of people think they have a strong core until you start doing something like this. So Darren, if you can get into the chest press position to start for it. So if you could do it properly for me, Darren, engage in your core. Pause, drive. And again for me. Then if you could just show me what happens if you do not lock in your core. Do we see this guys? Exactly that. So when you're doing this exercise, you need to focus on your core first. When you're pressing, press through the core into the chest and drive through. Do not pivot, do not lock or try and concentrate purely on brute strength. Use your core to stabilize and you'll be able to do this perfectly. Thank you very much. Welcome back again to Suspension Training 101, shall we say. So we're gonna concentrate now on a fly with the pin out, remember. This is the pin out. So Darren, if you can carefully get to the position. This guy's again, you need to focus on the core. As soon as we go to do a fly, it's totally different to a press. If you get this wrong, it, it is quite an amusing thing to watch, which Darren will probably demonstrate in a minute. But we're gonna do it correctly at the minute. Darren's gonna come out, controlling the core, controlling the core, and hug the tree as we did before. We're gonna do it again. And he's gonna squeeze. See, all of this is stable. So if you just pause there for me, Darren. Relax your core. Yeah? See how easy that is to go wrong. Yeah? Like that. That's good. So if we could go back into it from down. Let's just go through a few reps. And hug the tree. Don't go too deep. And again. Good. We get the idea of that, guys. Any questions, just put them below. Hi again, uh, now we're going to do individual movement, so we're going to do a isolation of left pec, right pec, just like when you're using ISO machines in the gym guys, and ladies, when I say guys it's just a figure of speech, I don't actually mean just guys. Um, so what we're going to do is get into position, we are going to do an individual pec press, so if you're using a dumbbell, it's simulating the same thing. 
So if we do one side, Darren. Pause. So what's happened here, the pin is out, remember, which is allowing, just lock your core in, Darren, for me, which is allowing this pulley movement here, yeah? So Darren is able to drop the dumbbell, pause, we're extending, he's gonna push his arm back up, he's gonna change arm, extending this cable, shortening this one, and driving through. We also are able to do a pec fly. Not very easy, he may fall. We will see what's gonna happen. So let's have a go, Darren, and out, and out, and out, and pause. Nearly went, Ooh, almost, and let's go again. And pause, and back in. Let's try this side. And pause, and squeeze it through. Not easy at all, takes technique. First time Darren done it, so fair play to him. 33 takes later. Okay, guys? <laughs> Thank you.